Right now, I'm trying to get the Google Docs up. I'll go ahead and stop my camera. Okay, oh, we're live. live. We're live. Okay. Hey, everyone. James and I here signing on to do our our bit before the bit of the bit starting at 10 p.m. I'm going to fast it's a forward bit, the uh, clock. It's a bit much. Yeah, I'm going to fast forward the clock a little bit. About a, uh, about a minute. Okay, let's see if I can get it to go back here. Oh, I have to go that way a little bit more here, right here. Okay, I'm going to start here. Okay, everyone. Gotcha. So we have nine minutes before our show starts. Um, we're very excited. Uh, we have a very interesting show that James is going to lead. Yeah, right now James is getting some stuff up. Stuff. <laughs> it's going to be all sciencey and stuff. Right, James? Yeah. James, are you there? Uh, I'm here. <laughs> I'm just looking for the uh, yeah, so show notes. Really Did you get notifications that you're live on anywhere? What's that? Let me see here. I'm not getting any notifications. I'm not getting any You're going to have to do that. I'm doing it for my phone tonight, right? Sorry, folks. We just got a little technical thing because I'm uh, I'm remote tonight from my phone. But yeah, I'm not, seeing, I'm not seeing any notifications that Dancing Bear is live. Or any of us are live for that matter. I mean, we're live right now. Can do you, are you in a place where you can see and see if we have a live video going? It's on Facebook. I clicked the link that it showed. It says it's Facebook Live. I'm just seeing here. I just didn't get any notifications. Can it you look and see like if live. Uh, we're okay, live on any of our pages? But I'm just not seeing any notifications on our Facebook page about the notifications. Let me just check here. I'm going to go to Dancing Bear's site and just check. So if you guys are joining us, uh, make sure to share this live feed because this is how we share our information with the world. We just are doing this for fun, trying to get everyone out there, start um, an interesting conversation um, every Few we every week we start a new conversation. Oh yeah, I see here. I see here. It's Dancy Bear Friends live. Um, I don't know if it's going. I'm checking um, Elk Rack in a second. Did you see? Okay, okay I see it's right now I'm looking on, for the show. I shoot. see it's live on Dancing Bear. Let me check it's Elk Rack. It's weird because usually by now I have some kind of notification. Yeah, I'm not getting anything on Did my you end get either. Get a notification on your phone. No, it's kind of funky right it's now. It's live on Elk Rack right now. Okay. I'm checking right now YouTube to see if it's on YouTube because I mean those I mean I'm not getting any notifications at all. It's just weird. So if you guys are watching our show, please holler and say, "Hey, I'm watching the show and who you're watching it with." Um, I'm the one that's at the helm today, so I'm trying to do my best to be the media media manager during this show so i'm sure you guys will oh it's live on youtube for us all right so i'm just I scrolling guess, down because we keep the show I notes guess, on google I, docs I guess we're live yeah i'm uh, just looking for the group with the show yeah. notes and it Actually, ain't showing oh, up on my And you know what's well, what? interesting? It's not showing that it's not showing on the video that we're live, and it's also not showing on the video the number of people that are watching, which it normally always does tell us. Yeah, that's weird. So mom and Rocky are watching. Do you see that? It's weird, right? <laughs> yeah, and I'm still G is here. G matters. There you go, <laughs> Joya. My mom's there. Rocky's there. Rocky, the evil dog, he's there. <laughs> Rocky is quite evil. He has a mastermind plan. You better watch out for him. You don't want to be on his receiving end. Nope, not at all. <laughs> and I'm bite uh, your fingers off. <laughs> I cannot find our show notes. Come to think of it. 
come to think of it, I think that I think that um, Maya is late. Uh oh. I know, Maya. Can you believe it? She's late again. Jeez. I'm going to send you a link to the show notes. Please. <laughs> Oh my goodness, James. Oh my goodness, James. What the heck? What's going on here? <laughs> I don't know. It's just So, I appreciate I appreciate the few that have chimed in to say hi. Um, of course, we love it when people say hi. Oh, Curtis is here. Oh, Wendy's here. Oh, Wendy's like, I'm not late. Wendy, we didn't say you're late. We're saying that Maya is late. <laughs> I know Curtis, we miss you. I'm glad that you're watching with us. So that's pretty cool. I know Curtis is probably only watching it because he just is really interested in sciencey type things. And this is up his alley. <laughs> what do you think, Curtis? Is he am I right? So, but James is trying to um James is trying to find his show notes, although I did send him the link. Yeah, I'm uh, <laughs> getting it uploaded. So what are you guys up to? Do you guys have a good dinner? I know. Where is Maya? She's, I don't know where she is. See, yeah, I probably, I'm going to try to share All right, Share the, so if you guys get a chance, share this video um, with us, with, um, with your friends and stuff, because it's always fun. The more the merrier. We love hearing feedback from people and their questions. Okay, I got the uh, show notes are up. I'm, I'm ready to go. Um, okay, now I'm done direction. with that and then the technical difficulties. So, yeah, two minutes. Are we frozen? There we go. You hear me? No. Hello? You don't hear me. Frozen. Yeah, I can hear you. I've heard you this whole time. Okay, cool. Yeah, okay. I think we're passing the, the right difficulties because I, I, I... I'm sharing it on... Um, oh, okay. I got to explain a little bit since we're about to go live here in about two minutes. So, yeah, folks, I'm doing this remotely. I'm actually in... Uh, and they're going to put them over. Okay, I'm actually remote. I'm in a place called Camp Balboa. In downtown San Diego, it's actually a little campground, and it's adjacent to San Diego Wild Animal Park, and I'm sitting in my truck. There's actually like a Boy Scout, a little Boy Scout camp down here. It's not well known. And I'm here with a bunch of kayaks to uh, go down to Mission Bay for a local scout troop. And I'm sitting here in my truck in a remote location, and I think I've had easier times when I've done this from a kayak in Black Canyon or in the middle of Mojave Desert. But, okay, I'm ready uh to go. And it's not the Maya, easiest you're phone late. I can feel for a guess. Huh? <laughs> Maya says, <laughs> Kurt, okay, Curtis says, honestly, I have no idea what tonight's show is about. I just happened to, walk, happened to be walking home from work and saw an alert that you guys went live. <laughs> well, Curtis, we're doing a show. Somebody got the notice. Stuff, so it's totally. <laughs> and Joyce says, I went for a hike up Mission Park. Mission Peak to make my cold go away. Ah, oh, that's not good. My family made me sick Maya in Washington. Maya popped in and said, I, uh, I got a few minutes to spare. Maya, you're supposed to be here at 9.50. You are late. I'm just hold telling on, you, hold on. I'm calling her in, and you are late. Maya's got a few minutes to spare, so she's <laughs> watching the show tonight. Oh, how magnanimous. I know, right? Maya, what the heck, girl? You're going to get the look. <laughs> I know, Jeez. No, we don't need to give her the look. <laughs> okay, we're I don't know. Seconds. I'm just all right, you ready for countdown? Okay. Yes. Ten. And ten. Seven. Six. Five. Four. Four. Three. Three. Two. One. Okay. We're starting the show. And start credit and cue credits. It's time for late night. Crap talk. 
with hosts Avea Kamori Yang and James Hermes. Let's get the fun started. It's time to start the show. And here we are, Savannah office and me, sitting in the cab of passenger seat of my truck with the flashlight shining, my face is lighting. Yes. So can you see? And yay, we got the we got the thingy. Oh, <laughs> this is obtuse tonight. <laughs> but first of all, let's go back. Maya, thank you for squeezing us into your busy evening. Okay, Maya, you're going to get the look. You're getting the look. Why do you make this do is make us do this, Maya? Why? I know it's like the thing is now we have to make an example of our audience. I mean, isn't that terrible? We have to we have to pull rank on our audience members and hit them in the head. I know. Well, the thing is, Maya, <laughs> you make us do this. You make us look mean. Yeah, we're supposed to be nice people. I know. She said. She said. She says. I'm sorry. My phone is not being so smart right now. I need a new one. Well, mine is not. I can identify that with that tonight. All right. So why are we yeah. here? Okay, everyone. So welcome to our show, Late Night Craft Talk. We're not just about talking our to our audience and admonishing them for showing up late. <laughs> but we actually are here every week on Friday, 10 p.m. Pacific Standard Time to 11 Pacific Standard Time. And we talk about all kinds of interesting things. Sometimes we have guests. Sometimes we talk about science-y type things. Sometimes we talk about art. Sometimes we talk about movies. We talk about all kinds of stuff. It's late night craft talk. So please like and subscribe to our Facebook pages, our YouTube channels, our Twitch channels, our Instagrams, everything that's in social media, because of course you will find out what's going on with us and it's a lot of fun. This is also a way for us to connect with you and get you guys to know what's going on with our businesses. Yeah, I mean, we follow us a lot of places on our TikTokgram book. <laughs> I made up a new word. Aha! Twitter. Genius. Book two. I like the old joke of you, Twitbase. You said now Twitch, yeah, yeah. Twitter's now X. Yeah, I know. That's weird. Isn't it just it? doesn't roll off the tongue as well. No. It kind of just lost its magic. I think that's a losing battle. Well, you know, the, they, the, I think it was in Frisco, uh, the big X that went on top of the building to replace the Twitter and the big X. And then uh, I guess a lot, some people complained going, I know. And then they, they had to take it down, the new ownership. Um, not go over so well. Yeah, SpaceX, I think cool. X is the social media thing. Not working out yet. Also, there is a Model X. So I don't know if like if Elon Musk has something with like the letter X. I mean, maybe that's his favorite. I don't know. Anyway. Well, the thing is, is that somebody beat him to it a long time ago, back in the 90s. It was called Fox and Mulder. The X-Files. You're right. Maybe he's and, infatuated. And the X-Planes. Maybe he's infatuated with Mulder. Or Fox. Or the Fox. Well, considering some of his theories, uh, he, he may have watched too many X Files. Mm -hmm. Or maybe he okay, is. Okay, with that. Happier subjects. Maybe he's an X File. Sometimes you wonder. He is the man that is kind of like one of the people that looks like a Bond villain. Yes. But he's done some cool stuff. He launched his, his Tesla Roadster to you know out to the orbit of Mars on a giant rocket. What guy isn't going to go like, uh, you know, the jump of the chance to launch something like that? That makes no sense. Yes. So that was cool. Safe. Anyway, <laughs> we got to move on. We got to still finish okay. what tonight's show is. Tonight's show. Yeah. Well, but tonight's show, we're going to get to their topic. But we got a couple things to cover. James. Yeah. James, I was going to ask you first, what's going on with Elk Rock Traders? We're going to finish the important. sentence and go to that. Just because, like, Curtis doesn't know what the show's about, so they don't take off going, they're going to talk about Barbie again. By the way, hi, Barbie. Hi, Ken. I was hoping you'd get into the joke tonight. So tonight, because of uh, the Oppenheimer movie, we're actually doing a STEM show tonight called Matter Matters. We're going to go over matter, states of matter, 
and we're going to go all the way to the quantum realm and hopefully not bash the MCU. Okay, what's going on with Del Crack? Uh, not much this week. We're still online to do Barona Powell Labor Day weekend. Of course, I made the announcement last week that we will not be at the Rancho Mission Viejo Rodeo in San Juan Capistrano in about one, two, three weeks because the rodeo is canceled due to CBC, which is an equestrian disease that has been rampant in the ag community around Southern California. And unfortunately, it was found in that part of Orange County. And so the rodeo was canceled out of an abundance of caution. Nobody likes it. Nobody likes it a bit. But um, that's what we, you got to do what you got to do to keep the livestock safe, keep the animals safe for rodeo anywhere around. It's just being a good person. So we will be at Barona Powell that weekend. Look for us. Otherwise, we're still at Palm Springs Village Fest on Thursdays. And that's all I got for about right now. What's going on with Dancing Bear? Were you well, dancing? We have a few things. Next week, the bead retreat price is going up $50. So if you do want to sign up for the bead retreat, 100% sign up by this weekend. Um, the prices are going up. Uh, we had it as like kind of like a promotional to encourage people to sign up. It's going to be a really great time. Uh, we are super excited about it. Um, it's going to be at the Hampton Inn in Carlsbad off Palomar Airport Road. And actually, the hotel rates we negotiated are much better than the hotel rates if you just try to book the hotel. Um, I was looking at what the rates were. We got 209 a night, and that's for two beds. So if you have a friend that wants to book bunk with you, um, 209 is a really great price. I think they're charging $358 a night during that weekend. So wow. our price is a great price. It doesn't sound like it is, but it includes breakfast. It has free parking and you will be in the heart of the event. So 100%, if you're participating in the event, stay at the hotel. It will make your life tremendously easier. You don't have to worry about driving everywhere here and there, here and there. And it's, you you know you'll bead from when you do your bead uh the open beading till midnight on saturday you can just walk upstairs to your bedroom so it's gonna be fun have I, you thought about and you know what i can probably do it right here have you thought about if you're gonna be up to beat you know on a saturday night beating i got my dry box right here i can pull this out if you're gonna be up to saturday night beating and it's a party night have you thought about making it a bead party? Yeah, we could do it as a bead party. You want to pull out your disco light? You look. You can have. You can have this. And look, I brought it out of my dry box. Yes, I hold it in my dry box for camping. Disco. <laughs> I what do you think about disco? disco? Matter, I'm I just going to leave this on here. This looks awesome. Yeah, I have a disco light. It's going to draw attention to you being in your vehicle, though. Uh oh well. <laughs> <laughs> I, it just looks cool. I'm going to keep it like that. Okay, yeah, it's kind of an interesting. It looks like a party. I'm in a party. Yeah, I'm in a like, discotheque. Yes, yeah. folks, I'm in a nightclub <laughs> called the Cab car. of My Truck. So, um, so party that's, on. Yeah, so that's the one thing um, that's coming up. If you do want to do the bead retreat, it is a lot of fun. And it's for four classes. It includes all the kits and open beading. It's basically a whole weekend. It's amazing. Secondly, we have a big store blowout sale starting on Monday. And every day during the week, we're going to have new stuff that we're putting out for sale. Um, we have a whole bunch of back stock. We have a bunch of new stuff that's just been in the back. And we just haven't had time to dealing with putting it out. And so we're just making these big grab bags at up to 50% off. So we're just trying to just move stuff out. We want to clear out our back room, get the area opened up. Um, and we just have a whole bunch of bead scrap. We have a whole bunch of fabric that's on sale. I mean, it's going to be amazing. So we will have some of the specials on our website. There's going to be a, a sale page. And those things are only going to be available during our sale. And um, it's going to be every day we're going to put new things on the website. So for a week, we're literally going to just be putting a whole bunch of stuff for, on sale. And um, it's going to be great. Okay. So that's two things. The third when thing. You say, <laughs> when you say blowout, and tell me when this gets annoying the audience or Savea with me talking and, you know, the disco going. 
Um, when you say blowout, are you talking about like, are you taking a leaf blower in the store and blowing this merchandise out the door for people to buy? Practically for the prices they're at. Yeah. Some See, are you using a leaf blower? Some of the things are literally going to be 50% off. That's a really good price. And this is all new stuff. It's not junk. So, I mean, this is good, good pricing. So but are you really using a, like a vacuum on reverse, a shot back to blow everything out? Are you putting well, actually, it in the vacuum and shooting off like a cannon? Actually, what we did was we used this machine that we sold on in April that we sold out of. Called uh, April the 1st. Back 2021. <laughs> and actually, it's really fantastic. So for you guys that missed out on that, that was like the best purchase ever. I wish I could have extended more of sales of that product to you. But basically, it's a vacuum that sucks up. You can use it to suck up anything on the floor, any vacuum, any beads. And it will sort them by color, shape, size in plastic bags and label them for you. So literally the best tool ever. But yes, we use that tool to do that. It also catalogs and folds and prices fabric. You just suck it up and it just folds the fabric and puts them in nice bags and labels them too. Gotcha. So. Good stuff. So are we ready to move on to the next part? Yes. Okay. Couple things we want to do. Um, one thing I haven't talked to you today about this is that I do want to do a shout out. Uh, Robbie Robertson. Many of our Native American viewers, which is most of our audience, should be familiar with him. He is uh, was on Billy Joel's E Street Band, and he passed away a few days ago. He's actually, I believe, please correct me if I'm wrong, Cree Nation. Very well known Native artist. Uh, one of my favorite soundtracks of all time is what he put out for Robbie Roberts and the Red Road Ensemble back in the late 90s for a documentary called The Native Americans and or called 500 Nations, excuse me. Incredible soundtrack. I love his his cover song for Ladder 49 and he passed away a few days ago and I wanted to do a shout out to Robbie Robertson on that one. That was uh that was a heartbreaker this week. And so y'all if you haven't heard of him, look up his music and prepare to be amazed and do a fast and do yourself a favor and do that, but pretty amazing. With that, the next part is, um, you know, a few days ago, I was uh, emptying, I was helping a friend close his office. He's been a doctor for a number of years and known him, been a patient a little bit, and he's a chiropractor, and we're closing up, and I looked over, and I went, what's that? It's this office equipment, seemingly office equipment, and I'm like, this ain't right, and I went over, and I looked, and you know what I saw? A Decepticon logo. Oh, folks, this was a Decepticon and it was in the wow. shape of a paper shredder and it is I just mean, tricky. And I mean, I mean, this is, by the way, this is like the coolest background I've ever had. I like that. So, um, I looked at it and I'm like, how do you activate this thing? So I happen to have this little piece of piece of this like square thing, this all spark thing. And I pointed at it and this thing went crazy. This Matter of fact, we've got video. This thing went off and went out and fought supervillains and superheroes. And we got some of the battle on video to show you. Folks, you will not see this anywhere but here tonight. This thing just blew up, you know, came out. And its actually name is Razorface, a Shredder Con. There are yeah. such things. Hiding out in this office for years. Came out and just started just killing everything. And we've got video to show that. Are you ready to show it? Uh, hold on a second. It's called Shredder Con. I know, but I put it. Uh, you'll see what I mean. Hold on. Okay. My computer is whole. Okay. Make to uh, have a discussion. Have a discussion. <laughs> <laughs> so <laughs> while we do this, folks, I'm going to save the punchline for we're going to get to the punchline early while we're loading up the video. But this thing fought two superhero. What one superhero that's not so well known. And another one that's a borderline superhero and definitely the ultimate of super villains. Villain, villain, king villain, the dude that we're going to be showing. So you want to go over, check your refrigerator, check your pencil sharpener, and make sure it is not a Decepticon, a robot in disguise. Yes, this is very important. Very important. Very important. important. You want to is make the video sure not agree with you? Safety. No, it yeah. is. I just, and how many I of you are on the edge of having a seizure from me talking with this light background I got with the disco <laughs> light behind me on the cab of my truck? 
I, I hope I know, nobody's right? having a seizure. Nobody have a grand mal. Okay. Or hopefully, focus seizure. Hopefully this shares the sound. Hopefully this uh, we actually don't want sound, sound because, you know, copyright. We don't want to get dig oh, and have part of our video mean? muted. Thank you, social media, stupid DRM no, rules. No, but, but didn't you make, you made it with sound. I watched This the is a different version that's safe for the show. A smart thought ahead. See? Wait, the one I, you're talking about the video. I'm sorry. You're talking about the video that you sent me is not safe for Facebook. No, that one is safe for Facebook on our show. That one's designed okay. for the show. Okay. okay. So I thought ahead. Look, you see? see, you can see my thought process right here. Just oh, here we go. Look at that, folks. Look at that. That is razor face the shredder con. Yes. The video is okay. playing, right? So we're going to go to the next thing. So now you're into the video. You got it. Look at that. Look at that face. That had been sitting in that office for years. Look at that. And the video skipping. We'll go with it. Is the video going for you? Uh, no. Just tell me what it's doing. Oh, it's killing! It's eating now. Aquaman. And it's laughing. It's eating Aquaman. Look! Look what it did to Aquaman. It's playing now. Dang. Look at it. it! Shredded him. Look what it did to Aquaman. And then we're gonna go. Look, wow. oh, Black Adam. We got Black Adam right there. The Rock play Black Adam. We know he he can fry things with magic. Uh -oh. look, look what he does to Black Adam. Dude, he just eat him up. This is the ultimate killer robot Decepticon that can even take on the magic of Black Adam. And what do you look know, like? Right? Oh, God. I'm going to be sick from this. this confetti. Thanos, Thanos with the gauntlet, infinity gauntlet. What's he going to do to Thanos? I know. Oh, oh, I can't look. I can't look. I looked. Like I looked. Laughing. Ah, uh, look what he did. All three of them, Aquaman, Black Adam, and Thanos. They're confetti. They're party streamers. Look at that. Oh, Lord. Stop the video. Don't, get, don't let it do that. I'm freaking out. Oh, what, what do you think okay, here? Okay, James. I'm freaking out. I'm just like, I'm just seeing colors dancing around right now. Looking around, being very careful, and um, I actually want to grab a false flashlight, small flashlight, and I'm hoping my truck is not a Decepticon. <laughs> um, so, so yeah, folks. Very important Definitely. Wendy Hodge says, "My son asked me why I have a gun in the house. I said Decepticons. He laughed. I laughed. The air fryer laughed. I shot the air fryer." You know, Wendy, these, your 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 comment happen. sounds your comment sounds a lot like Jack Handy from. Remember the comments? Was it uh, something moments from uh, Jack, Deep uh, Jack Thoughts Handy. with Jack Handy? I deep love thoughts. Deep Thoughts with Jack Handy. Deep Thoughts. Are you sure you're not just telling us Jack Handy style about the Decepticons? Because it sounds a lot like that. Hmm. It probably is. I love Deep Toss with Jack Handy. One of my favorite he did was what would you be more afraid of? A shark or an elephant? I would be scared of a shark strapped to the back of an elephant, strampaging through the forest, destroying and eating everything in its path. I don't know why that stuck with me after all these years, but those are words to live by, folks. So Wendy admitted that she got deep thoughts by Jack Handy. <laughs> we we should start our own version of that, but we still got to make it original so we're not like carbon copying something. Yes, yes. But you know, I one of the favorite ones of Jack of deep thoughts for me was he says one thing. Okay, I'm paraphrasing because I don't remember it word for word, but he says one thing kids like is to be tricked, and so. I took my nephew over to a burned out warehouse and I said, oh no, Disneyland burned down. Oh, I remember that and, one. And 
I was going to take him to the real Disneyland, but it was getting kind of late. <laughs> I think Hilarious. I remember one that was, uh, I was out with my child and walking, you know, a nature hike. And the child, and it began to rain. And the child asked, why is it raining? And I said, it's God's will. And God is crying, probably because of something you did. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> you laugh, but then at the same time you're like, "That'd be funny to say to a kid," and then you're like, "No." Yeah. Okay. All right. So, should we get on with our topic of our show? On with the topic. Okay. Well, let me share the. Oh, you know what I should do? No. I should probably set this up so that. This is gone and this is gone, and then I'm going to save this as this will make it easier for me. Okay. I would love to do a remote fun thing over here, but I mean, I've got a truck with 13 kayaks on my it's truck and a trailer. Out. Sitting behind it'd be fun to do a tour, but it would look really weird. Um, Never mind, I'm seeing the cab of my truck with disco lights going that can probably yeah. be seen from the beach. Yeah. <laughs> That's why I yep. said you're definitely drawing attention to yourself in the car with the lights on. Oh, what the heck? You only live twice, before and after. Mm -hmm. With that. So but uh, again, folks, uh, hopefully uh, you're, you're calming down or anything. Nobody is getting induced for any kind of epilepsy. All right. Mm -hmm. Or I'm just yeah, at a party and I'm lying that's in my truck. It's part of my background. Okay. It looks like galaxies yeah. in the back. This could be the quantum know, realm. Like... We'll work with it. <laughs> right? You getting, the, you getting the PowerPoint queued okay. up? Okay. All right. So I'm gonna add... Yes, I have it queued up now. Okay. So matter matters. Matter matters. Okay. So I'm going to read from the slideshow. Okay. So what is matter? Matter is anything that occupies space and has mass. Mass is a measure of the amount of matter contained in, in or constituting a physical body. Matter is all the stuff that exists in the universe. It has both mass and volume. James, are you ready for the next page? Yep. I'm, I'm following the notes. You mean, I'll, I'll re, you, let's just go tag team on this. Okay. So a lot right here, what you're seeing is there are three states of matter. Solid. If you touch yourself, you're solid. Touch your car, your computer, that's solid. Then there's liquid. Like in my cup, Nalgene cup right here. This is a liquid. I don't want to spill because it'll look like I had an accident. That would be bad. There's liquid and then there's gas. And we're not talking about what happens after a can of beans. Though that is gas. A physical, hey, matter of fact, quiet. a physical chain. Was that something to get my attention? No, the dog's barking. I yell okay. really loud. I'm like, quiet! So a you can actually physically change from one state of matter, being solid, liquid, or gas, to another state of matter without uh, changing its chemical composition. A uh, prime example is going to be water to ice. Uh, and then like steam. That's the easiest one for people to realize on that one. We have slide. We're this is slide three. Yes. Okay. Okay. So slide four. Uh, all right. So all solid objects have a mass that can easily be measured by its volume. Liquid also has volume that can be easily measured. So if you're looking at this, it says. I have to see, I have to make this bigger because it's too tiny on my screen. Okay, what is the unit, what unit of measuring volume is the smallest? A cup, right? Yeah, we're measuring mass here, folks. Like, just like you measure mass with solid, which we'll probably talk about, as well as gas. You have the cup, the carton. Is that dish soap? Uh, that's Windex and Windex, yep. Yeah. Why not talk so, about Windex when we're talking about James, matter? Yeah. James, I have a question for you. What, what? weighs what weighs more? What weighs more? A pound of feathers 
or a pound of rocks? Actually, a pound of Hershey bars. Oh. But what takes up less space? What takes up less volume or more area? Feathers. Rocks take up less because but, that volume is condensed into a little thing, a smaller area. Just increases the mass and the weight. Just because you have a rock, a pound of rocks, doesn't mean yeah, you can't I, put more matter in the rocks. You can put. I only know this because some my brain resembles something between a feather and a rock. Usually, the feather is the brain, and the skull is the rock. So I have light and dense, and not so much matter. So, did you ever see? There was a movie. I don't know which movie it was. And they were showing a big beaker and they filled it full of rocks. And the teacher asked, is this full? And they said, yes, it's full. It's full of rocks. No, it's not full. So the guy pours in sand and the sand goes in the cracks. And he says, is this full? They're like, yes, it's full. No, it's not full. And he poured in water because all of the space was filled anyway. Yeah, I, I get it. It's just like this Nalgene. You know, we're looking at how much uh, those those hold. This Nalgene is currently holding uh, 500 milliliters of water until I do this. I just spilled some water on my face. <laughs> I still actually have my I actually have my uh, bow tie right over here, and it's still got oatmeal from the show two weeks ago. I got to clean the bow tie. Oh, okay. By the way, my shoulder totally peeling. Now you can see it. I have a peely sh shoulder. My my sh shoulders, both of my shoulders were peeling bad. So anyway, okay. Got it. Okay, should we talk about Next gas? Slide. Yeah. This is a great picture okay. to show between uh, gas, liquid, and solid and stuff like that. A hot spring at Yellowstone National Park in winter. So a gas has no fixed shape or volume. The atoms or molecules that make up the gas fill the container that holds them. Be the container, you know, a uh, scuba tank, something like that. The gas expands until it is uniformly distributed throughout the container, even in the presence of gravity. The air that constitutes our atmosphere is actually in a gaseous state. And when we talk about conversion of matter, look at that. Water to steam with ice surrounding it. All one picture. We're so, clever. I just want to make a quick shout out. We have uh, Zane saying bonjour. Bonjour. Comment allez-vous? Okay. Anyway, sorry. Go ahead. What happened? <laughs> we just had a visit. One of our show people say hi. And oh, I want bonjour. To I have to and navigate through bonjour. like two screens to get to the convert to get to the comments. Yes, I just said. Uh, I said. I said same and I said in the same said bonjour and I said bonjour comment allez-vous okay. Right, okay what what Savannah said yeah I said how are but you you know doing? that if if we have somebody with a sophisticated you know obviously French and it's very romantic language and sophisticated should we do the show with pinky out just to make everybody think we're sophisticated sure We'll see how long this lasts. Okay. I'll drink, I'll out. My, I'll drink my, my drink here with my oh, pinky. I'll out. do that with you. I still got my cup. I look, I got my uh, I got my Jason cup. <laughs> got my Jason cup. That's so sophisticated. Let me tell you, James. Matter of fact, I gotta show it. I gotta show it. I'm also wearing my Jason t shirt, if you can see it. Mm, okay, wait. Hold There's on. Jason. Not Friday the thirteenth. Okay. See. Okay. With that trivia, we want to talk about atoms. Yes. Okay. All right. Oh, it's actually going to be the next one is going to be. Wait, that was. It says slide six. We're supposed to. Oh, is it the next one? We're supposed. Okay, we're discussing slide five. Okay. So, what is an atom? An atom is the basic building block of chemistry. It's the smallest unit into which matter can be divided, without the release of electricity electrically charged particles. It's also the smallest unit of matter 
that has, a char has the characteristic properties of a chemical element. We're going from big to small to smaller to smaller to the smallest. We're now we're down to no. atoms. So what we got there, let's look at the parts of it. Yes. We got the nucleus, the electrons, the proton. The nucleus is where the protons and the neutrons are at. And then the uh, electrons that go around it. So uh, neutron, neutrally, neutrally charged, has no charge. Proton, positively charged. Electron, I believe, is negatively charged. And it orbits because of magnetism. We'll actually talk a little bit about magnetism tonight, folks. Like I said, we're going smaller and smaller and crazier and crazier tonight. It's definitely a lot of interesting things for, I don't know, this is basically like my, what is it, my chemistry class from like junior high. Oh, we're going chemistry and we're going crazy physics. All right. So you got that. We're just making sure everyone remembers. Oh, we have Adeline Morales, but a happy sign. Happy baby. Awesome. So we got the atom right there and everybody's thinking, you know, Captain Adam or Ant-Man, which we'll be touching on apparently, obviously, and talking about. So we have the parts of the atom there. That is the basic fundamental matter matters made of different combinations. Depending on the type of how many neutrons, protons, and electrons orbit, it makes up the different elements and uh, whatnot. We'll actually get to that. Should I go to the next one? Okay, let's go to the next one. Okay. An element is a fundamental item that can't be broken easily into smaller pieces. Hence, a lot of you that have been to high school or Know your science a little bit. Periodic table of the elements. That is, you know, the proton neutrons as they act differently and whatnot. They uh, that is a list of that can't be broken down easily into smaller pieces because that is the basic element. We got it right there. Including, what did Tony Stark make his second arc reactor with? Palladium. Um, or was it vibranium? No, vibranium was actually the uh, rare metal. I don't think it's an element, but it's a combination of metals from Wakanda. But he didn't get Curtis, I, I hope you're not screaming at us right now. I wonder if No, but I know that they were Wakanda was giving away the access to vibranium to people. So I, I thought they he gave they gave, oh, anyway, I could be wrong. Well, they were holding on to it in Black Panther 2, which god, that's a great movie. Uh Wakanda Forever. Um, they weren't giving it away because, I mean, nations were trying to go over and steal it, and it wasn't going so well for them. Hmm. Cool, cool. All right. To finish this, chemistry and physics. Uh, Elma can't be broken down to smaller pieces. And Oops, I fell over. I got to put my phone back up. Yeah, apparently, I didn't read my part, too, because there was a second part to my slide, which you said. Oh, Oopsie. In chemistry, okay. what's going to happen a little bit tonight? In chemistry and physics, an element is a substance that can't be broken down by non-nuclear reactions. Mind, okay, mind so you, because we're doing this because often right? we say non-nuclear reactions. That was from this slide, right? Uh, is what's the slide number? So we'll go with that. Let's, the next one's actually supposed to be purity compared to the elements. You're good. Yeah, because it's, I because I, okay. Yeah, that's right. one slide ago. Yeah, okay. All right. Let's go to the periodic table okay. elements. So, non nuclear reactions. You got to think nuclear reactions, that is fission, where you got, uh, you know, basically you're hitting unstable plutonium or uranium very hard and it's making it go split up, and that's why you get a nuclear explosion. That's why we say can't be broken down by a non nuclear reaction. Smart. Okay. Next is yours. Okay. Next slide, slide eight. Well, I'm just letting you know I took a slide out, so we're one slide behind. Sorry. Okay. Okay. Um, what is a molecule? What is a molecule? A molecule is two or more atoms connected by chemical bonds, which forms a smallest unit of substance that retains the composition and properties of that substance. So you look at the hydrogen and the methane and the caffeine and the D, they're all connected with other items. So, for example, water is H2O. Um, oxygen is O2, so it's two oxygens connected, right? H2O is two hydrogen, one oxygen, right? Two hydrogen, hydrogen and two oxygen. I don't know. Two hydrogen, one oxygen. 
That's yeah. about right. But you think when it says they're chemical bonds, they're not romantic bonds? <laughs> well, chemical bonds. Or is romance chemistry? I just pour water. I'm pondering this. We'll go with it. I just pour water on myself. I'm sitting here. <laughs> I didn't have my lid on my drink because I took it off earlier to fill it, and I don't. Totally so there's less volume of water in your drink. Yes, and I have H two O on my shirt. <laughs> <laughs> Got it. All right, should I do the next one? Yes. Okay. Let me move the next slide. Okay, a molecule is a group of two or more atoms held together by chemical bonds. A compound is a substance which is formed by two or more different types of elements which are united chemically. Romance. Chemical. <laughs> are, are they actually, all right. Elements which are united chemically in a fixed proportion. All molecules are not compounds. All compounds are molecules. Think about it, folks. Now, when we talk about, you know, like, the compound, you know, you got the molecules, might be the same thing, mix up gold. Gold's an element. When you start getting compounds, you start getting cool things like vibranium. Curtis, don't yell at us. Or Wendy. I to or or you. adamantium. I have Compound this thing metals. I want to show you. I have this thing I want to show you really quick. Okay, so see this here? We can see this. This yeah. is the caffeine composition. So actually, let me fill this with something dark so you can see because it's realize it's hard to see in this cup that I have here because it's clear so this is the call chemical like composition composition for caffeine and caffeine yes. would be a compound I don't know <laughs> yes <laughs> is that I've cool stuff. I have to get chemistry class next semester it's a beaker coffee cup James Beaker? Me, 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 me. From the Beaker Muppet Show? Okay. Anyway. Okay, I miss Beaker from the Muppet Show, don't you? Ah, it carbon dioxide. Really All right, good. molecules. Okay. So we covered that. You've got the oxygen gas. Then you've got carbon dioxide. Compound. And there's weird... Oh, you know what? I'm hearing fireworks. That's actually... SeaWorld? Yeah, I'm seeing the, the fireworks in the distance from SeaWorld. It's about as colorful as the cab of my truck right now. Okay. All right. Should we go subatomic? Yeah. Wendy likes We're going up. smaller, smaller, crazier, crazier, folks. Okay. Subatomic. Okay. Let me go to the next slide. I Inside love that picture. Now. Subatomic means of relating to or being a particle making up an atom or a process occurring within atoms. The electron is a subatomic particle. Two, having dimensions smaller than an atomic dimension. Do I so atomic that? dimension would be the uh, atom as a whole, you think? Sub yeah, I think so. And then we start getting smaller, like the electron, which is a smaller part of the atom, you know, that orbits the nucleus, the protons and neutrons. Yes. We're getting subatomic. Getting yeah, crazier, we're definitely smaller. Getting to Adam, we're getting definitely getting to um, Ant Man level here. Oh, we're going, we're going Kang into your quantum quantum mania. Yes. I was wondering how long we can make it through this show, but with until we said Kang. All right. <laughs> Uh, I, I, I love that photo. I mean, I haven't looked at a picture of atoms and stuff like that. And we were looking at this doing setting up the show. Um, I saw that. And I'm just like, I looked at it for like two minutes, folks, just going, there it is. You remember when we were in high school survey, it's like atoms were too small to see. And then finally there was this like electron microscope was able to pick up little dots, little black dots, which is not like an X-ray. And so we finally see atoms and now we're looking inside one. And it looks almost like a funky eye of Sauron, but like, you know, friendly. Well, you know, back in the dark ages when we were in school, they had in 10 feet of snow uphill. This is, this is, this is, you know, this is unheard of. This is Star Trek. Oh yeah. This is, this is like the future. Well, now we're in the future. Yeah. This is the present. 
I'm confused. <laughs> All right, should I go next? Okay. Okay. There are three subatomic particles. Protons, which we talked about, neutrons, and electrons. <clears throat> Two of the subatomic particles have electrical charges. Protons, we talked. Protons have a positive charge, while electrons have a negative charge. What is smaller? What is smaller, folks, than an electron, a neutron, or a proton? Woo! Dark matter. Dark matter. Oh. Oh wait, we got that right there. We're supposed to. We got to discuss this one, isn't it? This is the standard model beyond the atom. Okay, this is the stuff beyond the atom because the next we're talking about like dark matter, but those are the parts. I it's the the thing's too small for me to see. But do we have like uh, muons on there? Like it says, okay, so it says elementary particles in standard model. Model there's fermions, quarks. Force carriers, bosons, leptons. There's a UCT. There's up, charm, top, down, strange, bottom. Does that okay. sound like? Yeah, it, one of those should should be responsible actually for magnetism. Which particle was it? Um. Because I can't. It's too small for me to really see any of the uh, on my my little phone screen to see any of the uh. I know. I'm trying to see myself. Like I can't even see it. All right. Those of our audience that are watching with the big screen right now. Provide Look at that. Those like we're I talking, and let us know which one of those okay. particles is responsible it for. What? It says Boston's. It says Boss Boston's provide three forces: electromagnetism, strong nuclear force, and weak nuclear force. Gotcha. So okay. And when, now we know. There's actually one, when I was doing the research for this, and the announcement was made like a week or two ago, but there's actually an observatory that is underground, and I'm not going to get the details right on this. I wish I could, because usually I'll remind myself of this, but um, there is, it is made with hard water, and I'm going to get a fair amount of these details wrong, but it's hard water, like hundreds or a thousand feet deep underground, and what it does is it measures... Um, not quarks, but uh, neutrinos. And neutrinos are so small and fast that there are billions of neutrinos that pass through us and the Earth and just pass right through us like we're not even there. That's passing the space between atoms through there that's just blasting through that we don't see, we can't feel. And what they do is these this observatory uh, with the hard water and I believe it's, I'm forgetting the term anyway, but it actually creates a little, once in a great while, out of all this hard water that's in there, there's all these detectors, and it'll create just this little flicker of light. Because what chance in billions that one of these, um, that one of these will actually interact with a, uh, with a uh, atom from H2O and create a little thing of light, and that's how they detect it. And what's neat is, is that, there's actually been sense of they detected enough that they actually can use this as an observatory and have actually got an image of the sun taken through the earth. And I'm not kidding folks through the earth. And we're actually able to image the sun from underground observatory. Wow. Yeah, it is. It's, it's mind blowing. It's really cool. Wow. Yeah. I, I didn't include that in there because it didn't occur till afterward, but uh, folks, Google that. It is really neat stuff. Okay, Curtis Youngbird has a very relevant comment. He said about a million neutrinos of uh, have passed through everybody watching this show since the start of the show. Millions of neutrinos. Yes, have passed. I thought I had I had a weird itch in my knee. I know, I've been feeling this weird energy, but I, I didn't know how to put my words on it, and that's what it was. Thank Do you, you think the, the light show behind me is from neutrinos? It's definitely a part of it. Yes. <laughs> Anything neutrinos. that's happening right now is a part. Our whole show is surrounded by neutrinos. It is. Matter of fact, one of them takes me out to dinner. 
Wow, that's amazing. Uh, you know what? I think there are more fans of our show than neutrinos that have passed through us right now. Yes. Okay, 100%. we got to move on with this one. Shall we go on to we now the look? We're going to get course, more and more interesting. Huh? James, we haven't said it in a long time, but we are open to any kind of sponsorship. Sponsorship of any kind. Pepsi, Coke, Dr. Pepper, Disney. We are open and willing to accept offers for any kind of sponsorship. Right, James? Yes. More than from Quarantutrinos, the science yes. division of Quarantinos. Exactly. <laughs> I know you're okay. trying to get me to go there. Okay. And the truck is pulled up with probably somebody I know, and they're going to be wondering, what the heck am I doing right now? <laughs> Like, what the heck is this person I'm just doing? not going to explain. I'm just going to sit here doing what we're doing because there's like a car about 15 that just parked about 10 feet to my side. And the people are looking at me going, what in the heck? And you know what? I'm not going to give any explanation. We're just going to go with it. <laughs> and maybe people They're think like, I'm stranger than I really am. With that light that's all flashing all crazy. Okay. Oh, yeah. These people are tripping. This is the okay. dark energy. Yeah. Oh, yeah, it is. What is dark matter? Dark matter is composed of particles that do not absorb, reflect, or emit light, so they cannot be detected by observing electromagnetic, ra electromagnetic radiation. Dark matter is material that cannot be seen directly. We know that dark matter exists because of its effect on the effect it has on objects that we can observe directly. Absolutely. You know what? Dark matter is also a great plot filler. It's a it's a witch I'm gonna call it to me as a plot filler for a sci-fi show mm -hmm. or spooky weird show. So but it's this, legit thing. Slide for the if you have a tiny screen, but the slide basically the first diagram on the left is that it's um 113.8 billion years ago when the universe was 380 thousand years old. That dark brown color was 63% dark matter. The yellow was 15% photon, 12% atoms, which is the orange, and the gray is 10% neutrino. Today, dark matter is 26.1%, which is the brown color, the same as the previous slide. The orange is 4.5% atoms, and that turquoise color or that teal color is dark energy and it's 69.4%. What's dark energy? Do you know, James? It's, uh, I can't see it. It's dark. <laughs> That's where it gets really interesting because now we're starting to deal with like, you know, uh, dark matter. No, we can't define it. And then, you know, we start talking about like antimatter, which I don't think we, you did you take that part out? No. No, oh, I think apparently I didn't put that in. I, for whatever, but I just, I just took out the two first slide at uh, the first slide with the, the, the shredder face. And what I did was I, I took that slide out the front. So it knocked all the slides out of number. Well, it, it's it actually razor face, the shredder con. Oh, I thought it was Taser Face. Well, Taser Face is the No, guy Taser from Face is from Guardians of the Galaxy Volume 2. It's a movie. I know. That people well, laugh at. Ra James. Razor Face is real. James. Yes? I was going to say, what do you think dark energy is? Do you think it's all of the cell phone waves and radio waves and all the microwaves and all the electricity? And no, but because we can directly measure that and, that and create the situation to use those use that. Dark energy. Um, dark energy, I think, is something that is. How do I def how do I define this? Because it's definitely increased from like 113 billion, 13 point eight billion years ago. Well, we've increased it locally. What we're doing is it it's slowly decreased. Uh, but what you're talking about is something we can actually measure and recreate locally. It hasn't. It's increased on Earth only because of our civilization. Uh, it's decreased after the Big Bang, which was like 14-something billion years ago. Mm -hmm. And as the universe expands, um, which is accelerating, which is like we can have a whole show and Brent binge people's minds on that. But as we expand out, uh, there's more space that goes out between. This is just, you know, imagine that. 
dark energy is something that we cannot directly observe. It's not something that we can exactly define, but it does have an effect on gravity and magnetism that we can indirectly and allude to uh, on that. We don't know what it is because we, that's why we call it dark energy. We don't know entirely, but we can see that it does have an effect that is different than what we are used to seeing and what physics we know, uh, laws of gravity and whatnot. Mm -hmm. Well, what you're talking about is not dark energy. It's something we can recreate. We know what it is because we're using it in technology. We understand that part. Dark energy, it's just a basically big, uh, it, we know it does this, but we don't know what it is. Kind of like when you're trying to define um, Fran Drescher. <laughs> wow. You have a good Well, she's point. the first person I could try to think of. Who's somebody we can't figure out? It's like something completely unknown. Um, sometimes Jack Black, but he's funny. He's really funny. Well, I would, I would almost say, how about like the Teletubbies? Or Barney. Boom. Yeah. Barney. It's, it's like they're trying to decipher the Teletubbies. We don't know what it is. We know they're doing something, but we don't know what it is. <laughs> they could be discussing physics that is 500 years ahead of us. They don't even speak English, but everyone loves them. They Are they still around? Language that you could, they don't even speak a language you can understand. Are they still around even? I don't know. I don't think they are. <laughs> I remember watching them in college going, what is it the kids are crazy about for this? I don't get it. Well, it actually, what got that with the Teletubbies was uh, when Jerry Falwell, I believe it was Jerry Falwell, made a comment about... Um, it was something, you know, dealing with LGBTQ. And uh, it was the triangle on top of one of them. And when the he said that. The purple one. Huh? The purple one. Yeah, they had the triangle. And so based off that, just, I mean, an absolute reach with that. And we're kind of bordering what we like to do with the show on this one, our topics, or we don't do. Uh, just because, you know, controversial, but. Um, you know, there was the triangle on top, and when he said that, the sales of that particular uh, Teletubby skyrocketed. Even my grandma was buying the purple ones and sticking it in her car and driving around with that and had a doll with that going, you know what? <laughs> it's so dumb, I'm going to even get into it. Even she was like, you know what? I like it because it's just dumb. It's just so weird. Well, I liked it because I'm, I love purple, hence my purple shirt. Yes. So anyway, but um, th that's actually the whole conversation of everything. Yeah, I figured we'd kind of be directing guys... it and we'd start talking about Ant-Man, MCU, and Quantum Mania, the science on that, which is influenced by science. You know, the whole idea of Ant-Man is amazing. To be able to go through all, like, to go up, to get large and small, but just by pressing a button and going, ding, 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 ding. Just like yeah. calling a room room service mm -hmm. or changing the channel on the TV. I got an interesting to bring up is that we, we looked at molecules. We looked at the shape of the molecules and whatnot. And as dealing with magnetism, a lot of our audience is probably, we got a pretty good audience. They already know what gravity is. Gravity, if you do a two-dimensional plane, you put a weight in there, it bends it, and that bend right there is gravity being pulled toward that because it's face bending. A lot of our audience are going to already know that. What I really always think is fascinating is that we look at we looked at the the structure of a, of an atom and then molecules. If you look up a three dimensional uh, uh, map of the layout of galaxies. There's actually like filaments left over and it looks like the Big Bang. The galaxies coming together, it looks like, uh, if you look at it, you think, wow, there's a solar system where that atom is shaped like a galaxy. And just from the small to the biggest, and we look at a cluster galaxy, which is a distance that we cannot even fathom. We're talking millions of light years you travel to see this or more. And if you look at the filaments, it looks like a structure. It looks like a structure you might see in a in a uh, molecule in a compound 
the way it lay, lays out. You would think, hey, that looks like atoms. Well, no, there's a galaxy, which is immeasurably, unimaginably bigger. And I just think that's a really just an amazing harmonics between the infinitely small and the unimaginably big of a balance and a harmonics that is just magical and artistic in creation. That it's just amazing stuff. I'm starting to sound a little like Neil deGrasse Tyson. But God, I wish I had his brains. <laughs> what we got? Kelly Joe says, looks like a tent disco ball. Sorry. Chime in late. Yeah, yes, J Kelly Joe. This is one of, she's been out of Chicago for my kayak trips. And yes, this is the disco ball that I stick in my tent and it lights it up. I've shown pictures on the show. Uh, people look at that going, um, what's up with your tent? Right now, there's people walking by because some people were walking by over here and went to the car and back, and they're like, they're staring for like a minute, going, What the heck is he doing? <laughs> but just like the team, they're wanting, What the heck is going on in that truck? He's having fun a with party this. with himself. If <laughs> oh, the group I'm working with tomorrow, I brought the kayaks for, they're gonna be like, What the heck is with that dude? <laughs> I'm Do very much looking forward to this morning because I'm gonna see. <clears throat> Just who has got, who's just curious enough to ask, what was that? And the others just create crazy rumors and me just going, you know what? Let's go with that. Yeah, you are pretty crazy. Well, let's just say that we know that our audience is so there's a practical reason for my setting. And people walking by not knowing what's happening going, what the heck? And stare, which I've been watching happening is absolutely freaking hilarious. <laughs> I'm gonna love this. Right? Oh my god. Yeah, well, I'm the I'm that guy. I'm the weirdo. <laughs> yeah. So, ah, hey, 1058. I know. So we need to wrap up. So I was thinking next week we can talk about musicals. I thought we were doing that in two weeks. Oh yeah. Because next week is what's next week? Next week, folks, next week, this happens about the middle of August. Every year, we've been doing this a while now, we can say that. Every year, this is a special buildup to Savea's, I'm going to say it, I'm going to give it away, Savea. This is a special day to Savea. It's the day that she paused potty trained. Wait, what? Nothing. That's weird. It was the aphasia. It's Savannah's birthday. Birthday party. Okay. Oh, I've already got the lights ready. I'm do my birthday party next Friday. We build up to Savannah's turning. Savannah's turning 25. 21. 21. 21. That is 21. Yes. We're going to go with that. We're not, we, folks, we're not inverting the age either. It's an actual 21 based off some kind of quantum physics exactly yes yeah, so next week we're gonna have my birthday party my birthday party is not on the is it the 18th is it it? are you inviting the audience over to your birthday party at the shop so um the 18th is before my birthday um but on my actual birthday i will be at disneyland you've never been there before <laughs> ever how do you even find that place i have been there so many times i can't even count them on any all of my appendages and more than you know my fingers and my toes so but i've been there so many, i think i've been to disneyland over to at least over 200 times in my lifetime easily or that is a lot how many times have you i mean how many times can you ride, ride Mr. Toad's Wild Ride and throw, not throw up? <laughs> Actually, it's not that. It doesn't. It's not. Have you been on that ride? Not in a long time. I used to love that ride. I haven't been to Disneyland in about more than 21 years. Okay, James, one of these yes. times we have to go to Disneyland together. Not at 150 bucks a ticket. I can go sea kayaking for a couple days okay, with the hotel James, for that. Guess what? guess what? Listen to this. You could write it off as a business expense. You literally could write it off as a business well, expense. Well, <laughs> I, I got to admit, 
because the show's business, yeah. there's stuff we've done and I've had to buy stuff and, and you know, I'll buy a prop over at Party City. It's absolutely deductible. 100%. Buy, a, buy the funny hat as a thing. It's deductible. It is because this is for our business. So, I, you know, and the fact that I'm down here at San Diego, I'm wondering if I could deduct that as a deductible because of the show. You can. You can. I could deduct this business lights. Exactly. Folks, this is not giving you carte blanche or reasons to go out and start an internet show just so you can deduct it from your taxes. <laughs> Though so it yeah, is kind of so, cool. So, yeah, next week um, we're going to be having a birthday party. So, we're going to be doing all kinds of fun stuff. It's going to be absolutely. Important. So we're going to be building up to that, and we're, we're live next week. And then in two weeks, we're talking about musicals. musicals. What gave us the idea? Well, well, I can tell you one of the reasons why. Why? For one thing, we're going to go see Beetlejuice next week on Thursday. Beetlejuice. It's a musical. Yes. Oh, we that's did right. A musical about Beetlejuice. I bought the ticket. A few months ago, so I saw they went up they, that they were coming to San Diego, and I'm like, "Oh, that sounds like so much fun!" And it's the original Broadway cast that's traveling with it. So I'm that's very cool. excited about that. Yeah, I'll um, say what well, I got the idea. We talked about it. And I talked about it a few days ago. I was actually the last week on uh, Star Trek: Strange New Worlds, which y'all know I'm a big Star Trek fan. They did a musical, and I'm like. I didn't know if I liked it or not because it was just weird. I love Nurse Chapel's song and their like bar trend forward thing. But I was just like, they did it. It's one of those things of you can, they did it, but should you have? And they did it. And I was like, okay, I think I liked it. It was just weird. But then I'm clicking through Facebook, messaging Savannah, and I saw this advertisement. Rogers the Musical. California Disneyland Advent, California, yeah, Disney California Adventures. Yeah. Steve Rogers, the it, musical. You know, they actually do musicals in the theater there. They have had Aladdin there for many years. And then they were doing Frozen for a while. And then they're now doing the Rogers musical. Wouldn't know that. But I saw that and I went, you know what? We got to do a thing on musicals. If Star Trek can do a musical, if and there's actually like been scout events or other pro special programs where I've tried to say, hey, let's go with the... Uh, Let's do a musical or let's base the whole event based off Sergeant Pepper's Lonely Hearts Club band. Needless to say, many people are not a fan of the idea, but damn, I'm one of those people who like say, hold my beer, I will find a way. They so, still have to. But well, we got to figure musicals. I w actually, when I went to college, one of the classes I took was music, music theater, and it was so much fun. I loved it. I learned so much about music theater. I had no idea, um, but it was really a cool class. And some of the assignments were literally to go see musicals. <laughs> uh, some people are going to love that. Um, when I was in, yeah. So anyway, well, we can talk about all that. I can talk about all of that, my class and all that stuff during that episode. So it's going to be a really interesting episode. I'm sure you guys are going to love it. And I can talk about Moulin so, Rouge yeah. and Best Little House in Texas because I love those musicals. Yes, so guess what, everyone? It is time to end our show, and we went over a little bit. So totally worth I, it. Yes, so I'm going to pull up the end credits, and thank you so much for watching our show with us. We really loved having you be a part of it, and we had a good time, and we learned something new. And Matter Matters, we actually did some really, actually went over some pretty good stuff tonight. And hopefully people that are like our more science literate uh audience members that know this better than you know some like us sitting here in trucks or in computers and screens that aren't being funky they're being funky tonight won't scream at us too much but we actually went over some pretty sophisticated stuff tonight because y'all awesome we love to share and learn from you too i don't know how that works on that but it works it does okay so i'm gonna put up the end credits you guys ready to dance with us i shall dance with my with I got the lights for it. Oh, ain't he cute?
<laughs> yes, he is. No. The musical. We meet, we'll, we'll sing no, about it in two weeks. Not cute. Not, not cute. Bye, Fine. Everyone. Good night, folks. <laughs>